Hello! Hi there, this is Johnny Money to World of Warships. After a reasonably long break, I am back with a new video on YouTube. Uh, I didn't have so much interesting to show lately. That's why there were no new uploads, but uh, maybe this one will interest you. That's a replay. I had quite a slump recently. Um, my last days. Uh, usually I have a win rate of around 60% and this is a rank battle. Hey, side panels, please. Thank you. Uh, this is a this is a rank battle. There are usually have even above 60% win rate and uh, recently the last week uh, was like something like 30 to 40%. So basically the win rate of an AFK player. Also, but this particular day was not very good and if you follow this battle you will see what usually my uh, battles look like currently um, no matter what I do I feel no matter what I do it's just uh, all going downhill somehow let's watch it anyway uh, this is a uh, me and a Z46 uh, currently my preferred destroyer I really love this boat and uh, together with me there's a Kitakazi on my flank and there's a third destroyer Jutland going uh, to the far side great and then we have three battleships and one cruiser each. And I will shortly type to the Kitakaze. Why don't I go in the cap and you play a support role? Because I have better concealment, 200 meters, but it is better. I do have the hydro that I can bully other destroyers out. If they come sneaking around the island here, and that's why I'm already going close to it, I can uh, maybe open them up. Kita can then uh, stay in the second row can smoke, can stay out of trouble, and can just go daka 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 on, on anything that is coming, basically. Any any destroyer, battleship, or even the cruiser. So I wrote it in chat, and he replied with OK. However, Kita... Well, I tried to go in, so I do the usual turnaround. There's no raider in the game, so we can go relatively close here. I launched my Hydro not to eat any torps that Mitch might be coming here. And I noticed my Kita is just heading in, bow in, and is smoking up. And this is just not the way how you do it. First of all, I go in the cap and you stay out, and he smokes up. He obviously got detected, that's why he smoked up, and he's just taking damage. So this plan already, even though I try to communicate, uh, this plan already goes wrong. And my trust in the ability of this Kitakaze player is greatly reduced. Here my Hydro picks up the the villain, uh, ZF6, and I guess she has used her reload booster on this on this occasion. There is another hint, uh, there are more torpedoes coming from another angle, so that's another destroyer, and by the looks of it that was the Fletcher. Those look like Fletcher torpedoes. So there is a Paolo Emilio still unaccounted for. I don't know where that one is, but I hope that is on the other side. And therefore I decide to keep the ZF6 in hydro range, chase around the island here. And even come around the island if necessary to, to open fire. But fortunately my Kita player gets something done and gets a torpedo on the ZF6. Great. Uh, just notice on the 10 line, the Paolo Emilio just popped up, so we have confirmation that she is elsewhere. And we also have a confirmation that the Fletcher is in the cap. It looks like now there's a Fletcher and then they have the Mogami and uh, Battleship Georgia there and that's it and everything else is on the other side. And I take the opportunity to, well, I have four ships at the A cap and there is one Fletcher here, so I thought I'd, it's a good idea to deal with the backfield. Maybe I can torp something here, maybe I can be a distraction. And uh, my four ships at A will just deal with the Fletcher. Yeah. Cannot be such a big deal, can it? So I see Mogami is turning around. I'm not quite sure why, but she does. And uh, yeah, I launch the torps. I use only one launcher in case the Mogami is turning towards me and I maybe need a second one. Uh, cruisers are usually hard to hit, so 
I'm, I'm not going to waste both of them. But I actually do get a torpid, fine. And now I have the option. Uh, staying, I'm, I'm in between these two ships, and on the other side, there is a cap with the Jean Bart. At least the Jean Bart was spotted close to the cap. So I'm actually, I think I'm in not such a bad position. In the meantime, the red team got the A cap because the single Fletcher, which is there, seems to be an obstacle which nobody can surpass. But my team at least is working on the Mogami. My torpedo hit was uh, initiating some focus fire and the Mogami got some hits and now she's so low on health that I can even take her down. Unfortunately it takes me three salvos and that gives the Mogami who already had her guns trained to my side. I guess RPF uh, uh, gave me away. Somebody used RPF against me. And uh, yeah, and therefore I took a return volley because the guns were already trained towards my direction. And uh, of course that hurts from a Mogami. So uh, I sent another top launcher towards the Georgia, that the second launch. Um, that was for the Georgia. Unfortunately, the Georgia is turning out or away from the torps and uh, those will most likely not hit. Please kindly note that we lost not only our Jutland uh, in the BC line, but we also lost the Pommern there. Um, they have three ships over here. So we have the huge majority of ships on the other side. But um, I think I can go to take the cap now. I'm staying away from it. I'm not going directly using the island. I'm using the shortest way. I'm keeping my distance because I didn't know where the John Bart is at this time. Now we've just seen her um, somewhere else, so I can easily go to the cap and take it. But before that, uh, my last position that I got from John Bart was uh, already old. She could have easily turned around and just wait behind that island. And then uh, my advantage as a destroyer is not such a big advantage anymore. So I play it safe. I go around. Um, currently, it's two versus two. So it's not that bad, and I think, okay, there's uh, four ships that we have down there, uh, uh, down there. At A, I'm taking the cap, four ships versus a Georgia. The Fletcher seems to have made an escape, even though there are four ships there. I have no idea what's going on there. I can't even see them anymore. I only see them on the minimap. And I'm taking the cap. Uh, the cap. Uh, these torps are RPF torps, because I expect the enemy Fletcher, who was making a disappearance. Ah, we trade a battleship for a battleship because we have four ships there and they had only one, so it's obviously a good idea that we trade one one on that side. Um, the Fletcher, I thought, might be coming towards me to kind of retake the cap here, and the RPF was indicating that something is coming there, so that's why I launched the torps here and also here. Who knows? Um, I also expect the Paolo Emilio to turn up at any time soon. Maybe she was already on the way and just decided to come back to, to fight me here, because obviously I'm here. Otherwise, who would have taken the cap? But uh, it's... Yeah, already knowing how the game goes. Uh, doesn't seem to appear, because we can see last known position of Paolo Emilio all of a sudden is there on the H line. There, approximately where I'm pinging my team to raise awareness that there is a uh, YOLO Emilio coming and uh, the Hizen and I see it coming. I, I, I have a pretty good idea of what is going to happen now. Um, the Paolo Emilio will pop up right in front of the Hizen and will just top her. And then I hope that all the other ships which are there, which is now only Kitakaze in Harlem, and there it is already, there it's happening, you can watch it on the minimap. Uh, that they are ready, that they have the guns ready to shoot the Paolo Emilio, so at least that she dies in the process. Our Hizen is gone. I'm halfway to the other cap because I think at this time mm, I can try to go there, but it'll take me some time to, to catch up with them, and by that time, who knows what's happened on the A cap, so I'd rather take the B, C caps, both of them. Um, okay, so... We lost that ship. Nobody killed the Paolo Emilio. So we have now three ships. There are four. And even though we started there with five ships on that flank, we, we traded rather poorly. And now it's the three ships that 
that killed our two ships on the BC line, um, which are left over, and they seem to be in good condition, and uh, yeah, they play versus two of our ships, so... Hmm. Not a good sign, but Kitakaze is already running, so I kind of hope no problem, eh? So she will just get into safety. At some point, Harlem will do some spotting, and the Kitakaze is in safety. But now she's dead, so I didn't expect that. Now it's looking rather grim. I have arrived at the next cap, which I intend to, cap, uh, to take. Um, my RPF points somewhere south of the island at A and I get an update on the John Bart's health so she has bled some health that's that's at least something just above 11k health um, that's not so bad lose track of her so I now taking the next cap I will go back towards the enemy and try to engage them I have uh, received... Oh, and there's the Paolo Emilio. So so we get an update on the HP pool of the Paolo Emilio and it's uh, roughly six and a half thousand, a little bit more. So I think if I can take her on in an isolated fight... Oh, and the Jean Bart is almost dead. Come on, Harlem, just one more salvo. Just maybe one... Unser team verlässt sich auf sie. Uh, I guess it's not meant to be. Uh. So the situation is now that um, uh, with the minimum amount of HP, the JB survived and of course uh, until I get there probably she will have one more heal and uh, heal back up, so it will not be so easy to kill her. But the Paolo Emilio is possible, the Fletcher is also low on health. Um, we lost six ships, they lost only three, so for every ship that they lost, they took two of ours. Uh, and this is basically how my games go currently. Um, I am 300 points behind. The only thing I have going here for me at the moment is um, that I have two caps and I have RPF. I'm also RPF from their side, um, but um, yeah, this is the advantage of having RPF. If you don't have that, you cannot make these kind of plays, but I get the reading that the Paolo Emilio will go there. I expect the Fletcher to be around there. I switch to AP, German AP, much better. I turn out to avoid these shots and come on, come on. Daddy needed the kill here. Wow, good, great. So the greed of the Paolo Emilio player was his downfall here because actually if you look uh, or if you go back in time, <laughs> they had enough points uh, to just win the game by keeping the A cap. They just needed to defend the A cap. I can have BC, no problem, and they would have won anyway because they had such a huge point advantage. Now, actually, they still have a huge point advantage, but uh, we still have enough point on the, uh, we still have enough time ticking, so um, it's okay. And then I see the Jean Bart, and of course she has recovered, but I think maybe I still have plenty of HP. I can take one for the team here, the team being myself. Really. But I have the German HE pen, 32 millimeters, and the Jean Bart has 32 millimeters armor plating everywhere. And she shoots, and for 20 seconds now she's visible, and I can smoke up. Yes, I took one, and I try to make as much damage as possible. But unfortunately, now I lose her. And it was not enough. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. The HDPM of the ship is not great. But he shoots, and therefore I can detect him again. Oh, smoke shooting, thank you very much. Immediately I open fire, even though he's repairing. Ah, oh, damn it, so... Yeah. That's going to be a tough one here. Can I kill him this time? And 20 seconds are over, I cannot kill him. There's a nice big battleship size gap for my torpedo spread. However, the Jean Bart misses the gap and hits the torpedo instead. And that was really, really helpful. This was the um, lifeline that I needed here. And now my RPF switches. And I guess now it switches to the Fletcher. So not only do I get the points for killing a battleship, and not only do I kill a threat that potentially can kill me, but I also get a new RPF reading, and now I have an idea where the Fletcher is. And I get the Alsas on visuals, 
Also is looking very, very healthy there, 60k, so yeah, that's that's nothing that I can just take out of the game easily. But the Fletcher, I remember, was low on health. You can see her health bar on the top side of the screen there, and that was the last that we saw of her. And now confirmation, she is in the cap. Yeah, I wasn't sure which cap she's going to take, but uh, it was clear that she has to take one of them. And killing the Jean Bart just gave me the reading that I needed, and now I'm heading south. If I'm the Alsace player, I would go close to the Fletcher and try to protect her, because uh, this is exactly what the enemy DD needs to do. Where else is the enemy DD supposed to go? And immediately, of course, being me in this case. So I use this, or I try to use this big island to keep um, some cover between me and the Alsace, but the Fletcher takes the cap. That's not such a big deal, but she's obviously in the bottom left corner of the cap, otherwise I would have been detected already. So I have to go all the way down. We almost detect each other at the same time. She's bow in. Um, that's good for me. Um, I have my hydro running. This is what uh, the Fletcher player discovers now. The smoke will not help him. He has to turn around and run. Can I get the kill here? I need the kill. Come on, 25. She's not visible anymore. But yeah, it's enough. Great. And of course, I have Hydro running, so these torps are absolutely no problem for me. You can see them. And now I can... Uh, well, actually, I don't need to take the cap anymore. Now the situation has completely changed. Um, before I needed to kill somebody and defend the caps, now I just need this one cap that I have, and I will win on points. I will win even on points, uh, yeah, well, that's just enough. Um, I expect the Alsace to have made a sharp turn and come around, that's why I launched the torps here, but now we get visuals on the Alsace again, and she is actually going north, which confirms for me that this game is actually a win now. So I will just take the cap for fun, and maybe for some XP that I will get along the way, and I'm happy to bank this victory. And yeah. So the, the first part of this battle, that was pretty miserable. Um, not sure if that was really my fault that we lost so many ships, but they traded very well. Yeah, they lost three ships, we lost six ships. And uh, this is how it goes. But fortunately, a lot of these ships were already on such HP that and they came one after another, not all at the same time. So I could deal with them one after another and uh, keep my bow, uh, both my caps for the most part and therefore secure the win here for the team. And if you were quite observant, it'll take out no no music anymore. It's just uh, it's just this bug that I don't get an end screen anymore. If you were observant, then you noticed that we had a one on four situation and that actually banged me the solo warrior achievement. And Wargaming having received uh, having removed all the rewards for achievements. Um, achievements really have lost their value, but the Solo Warrior, I have to admit, that's the one that I really like to have, um, that really still means something to me. And also this concludes the title of this video, why it's called uh, number 13, because that indeed was my Solo Warrior number 13. Solo Warriors are hard to get and a lot of people don't have any or many. So if you ever wonder what it looks like to get a solo warrior, this is it. This is how it goes. <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your attention. This is Johnny Moneto. Have a good time. Bye-bye.